police on the west right now. Just want to make everybody aware, of, if they're not aware of where the sign is with this bob on it, and the effect that it could have. To the business is down here in this town. I don't know, I don't know if you've seen any of plans or something that we could deal with. Or drawing line by coming here and, and talking to you about this, but this is uh, something I think that we have to get involved in. Uh, has anybody seen the plans or uh, the right turns that they want to get off 13? And there's not going to be any traffic coming down this way. I was at that four hours earlier. You were there? You yeah, I'm going to comment that way. Yeah. You're aware of this. And so, some of the concerns we had is um, on Route 13, they want to do two things. They want to put a right-hand turning lane coming off Pine Grove going on the 13th. And they also want to put traffic like about a quarter mile down, somewhere around where the departments are. There's, two, there's a couple things that I can see happening with that. Is um, would you mind this, this could be turning so, into sort of a destination for them. Um, they're going to have a right aid there. They're going to have a fast food restaurant. They also want to have a super wobble with gas and diesel. Um, if they come through that intersection, able to turn into that wall walk, they're going to have a traffic light where they can get back out without making a left-hand turn at that light on Pine Grove to get on West Strand Avenue. They can get on Route 13 north-south. They can get on 95 from Route 1. So right there, you're eliminating the left-hand turn to come into the beginning of the borough, which is where I know we're kind of out in the borough, but we are Marcel, we do pay Marcel taxes. Uh, if they come in from the other side, which I, Wawa, I presume is going to have signage up, and Route 1, you know everybody goes past Snipes, it's very easy to get down there. It's probably a quarter mile down. They can get into that traffic light. They can get diesel, fuel, they're going to bring truck business in. 24-7 um, operations, Wawa's going to be. So those two angles coming into Morrisville, I'm looking at, they're going to bypass <laughs> Um, I grew up in Morrisville. I went to school in Morrisville. I've lived in Morrisville for 30 years. I'm currently Falls Township resident. I am taking this up with the fact that Falls Township board, both of us are. Um, we're in the middle of the variance in hearings. We have lawyers and stuff like that. I'm just more concerned about the fact of besides me, there's going to be a lot of other businesses that are going to be affected by this. If you go down West Trenton Avenue, everybody knows it's on West Trenton Avenue. There's two 7-Elevens, there's three gas stations, eight pizza shops. Um, that's not even including the gas stations downtown. There's two down there. There's a 7-Eleven downtown. Marshall is probably 95% small business. They're the Walmart of the convenience store. It's not going to be pleasant for Marshall Borough at all. It's just not going to be. Um, they're going to pull. I mean, I'm a gas station. Obviously, they're going to pull from me. But they're going to pull from every business in the borough. And if, if people do not make that left-hand turn, who do not get off a of Route 1 to enter Lower Marshall, Marshall Borough has got a problem. That's why we're here, just to make sure. I'm not asking you to get politically involved in my fight against uh, Falls Township, but Marshall's got to have a lot of concerns on this project going through. I don't know what you can do as a borough. I'm, I'm not familiar with these meetings. Um, unfortunately, I'm being thrown into them with all the other stuff that trying to run a business and everything else we have going on. But, um, there's some of the points that I have. I have, I have a lot of issues with it, but I'm not going to sit here and talk for three hours to tell you about it. But at least if I get your mind thinking, and you start thinking it from a fact where I can just want well, to just deliver a cup of coffee, with all I like all I'm coffee, that's fine. But you got to think of all those small businesses in the town, which are, I mean, my shell station that we own is not corporate owned. It's private again. We've owned it for seven years. I've worked there for 30 years. He's worked there for 30 years. So this is something that I, I hope everybody's thinking about um, from Marshall's perspective. Kevin, could you say, state your name for a little bit? My name is Kevin Stillwell. Mm -hmm. That's all I, I, I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That concludes our uh, public comment portion.
about uh, the power outages and what people are going to do. Uh, Steve Sanserio was there and other public officials. Uh, I just want to tell you that they're going to have an open house meeting at Penwood Middle School for the public on September 18th at 7 p.m. I think it's important if anybody's interested in why we're losing power and what's go what PICO is going to do, they're going to put a massive project ahead in the next, uh, I'd say, about nine months. And uh, they're going to try to upgrade a lot of things. They're going to do a lot of tree trimming. They're going to do a lot of things at the, <coughs> at the substations. And that was one of Morrisville's problems here. Uh, but I'm not going to go into details. They had maps of where they were going to work, when they are going to work. Uh, but they're going to let all that information out to the public on September 18th at Penwood Middle School okay, at 7 p.m. So it's important that residents attend. Can I add to that that the, um, the outages are, the substations are not here in town. And I think some people think that maybe that's how the why it's, you know, why are we getting it fixed because it's right here, but it's not. It's, yeah, it's that, not the, the Morrisville substations, the substations that control Morrisville are actually the most natural. So uh, I'll tell you that they had, they had massive damage. They had three major storms. They have 1.6 million people, and they've been 10% uh, of the people have been knocked out in these storms. Uh, they spent major money in replacements, and they're actually going to do a lot of work in this lower end, and that's the lower end of Bucks County here. So they spent massive amount of money. Uh, some of the money they spent before for switches and stuff didn't work. They're going to replace them, and. Uh, we're going to try to help our town. So I think it's important to keep it As you can see, our project is moving along. The boiler is being worked on right now. Uh, air, air conditioning pads will be poured next week. Uh, they've been laid out. Uh, uh, gas line is being installed as we speak. Uh, the reason that tiles are out is because we're getting new insulation around the building. Uh, some other stuff that's been done. Oh, all the windows are complete. We're getting an ADA door downstairs. It was installed and they're going to they're going to put the electric in within a week. Uh, I think uh, there's some real major change. If you look at this building in the daytime, you cannot see in the windows. It's, it's very attractive. Just for the record, also, I forgot to mention that Mr. Sisser arrived at 7.50 p.m. Uh, Sister. Uh, thank you very much, President Strzok. Uh, this month, uh, one of our main actions was working with council for the fire department. On your agenda is going to be... Can I hear my phone, please? Uh, one of the things we've done this month is work uh, with council for the fire department uh, for waiver of land development for 528 North Pennsylvania Avenue, demolition and stormwater management facilities, and the parking project. Uh, it had been a it's been a it's been a good process. The, uh, uh, the fire department has received all the approvals as necessary under the municipality's planning code. Uh, there was a question as to the recommendations. Of the, uh, of the Morrisville Planning Commission. It's my understanding that uh, they had put the application in front of them twice. They weren't able to get a form, but the members that were there were supportive. This has been reviewed by the Fox County Planning Commission, our engineer and planning staff here, and it's our recommendation that council go ahead and uh, get the fire department moving on, uh, on this project. And that's why the labor of land development's in front of you uh, this evening. Um, in relation to uh, one question that was solicitor related under a uh, public uh, couple in a public comment. Um, in relation to uh, uh, trash collection and uh, Act 511 taxes, uh, although trash collection could be actually listed on a bill for a fact, uh, a, a Act 511 uh, tax, it is a separate fee. 
And the General Assembly gives you the ability to only levy a certain amount of taxes, um, and it has to come from that authority to go ahead and do that. So uh, boroughs, municipalities, cannot exactly integrate, um, say, a, a, a pickup fee for, um, for trash with a 511 tax. If they wanted to, they could list it on the bill, but it can't be integrated as well. Um, number two, uh, there was a, a question related to uh, the Keystone Report that was at uh, the request and the, uh, in relation to our settlement, the Keystone Report. Um, that was at the request of the judge. And the judge, uh, it is a finished matter, but the judge said if there was any dispute whatsoever or any violation of that, rather than refiling a whole new lawsuit, the judge would retain jurisdiction on that matter for two years. So that, that explains uh, the judge's action. Uh, that's the solicitor's report. Thank you very much. Uh, next, uh, here's Ms. Schumacher, you're welcome to present. Good evening, members of council. Uh, I'd like to report on a few matters. First, uh, agenda item 10C is the final approval contract between the excavation for the storm drain reconstruction of Williamson Park. The contractor anticipates getting ready to start on that work within two weeks to provide that uh, to group tonight. Uh, in conjunction with that, the uh, borough also is uh, getting closer to starting the pool demolition work, and hopefully we can coordinate a little bit of that work with that contractor to uh, save some time. Okay. Uh, also, one other matter, um, FEMA is scheduled to uh, issue a letter of final determination for the flood mapping that had been done. As you're probably aware, several years ago, FEMA put forth new flood mapping for all of Bucks County. As a part of that, uh, they did a whole new flood study for the Delaware River. Uh, it does change some of the flood elevations in Morris Mathuro. Uh, for the most part, it's a positive impact on the properties in Mathuro. Uh, there are a few properties that are going for being outside of the flood zone, being in the flood zone. But there are more properties going out than are coming in. <coughs> And the borough will be required to adopt an up-to-date floodplain ordinance within six months from the date of adoption, which is scheduled for tomorrow. And that date will be March 16th. And uh, once that ordinance is adopted, uh, it won't become effective until that March 16th date, uh, whether you adopt it next month or several months down the line. How are the residents notified? which direction they're in, either in the flood or outside the flood. I mean, are they notified? Do they have to find out themselves, or are they notified by an agency? I believe they're notified by their insurance company, but I will have to uh, find this.
This would build the fleet and also hopefully save a lot of money on maintenance. Because the part we have now is maybe repair. And of course we get maintained the part we have for a while and have a nice fleet and use the, uh, the older cars for other duties. Um, interestingly enough, the last two people were talking about the Super Wawa. I did receive a phone call, someone left a message about it. And they shared concerns, basically the same type of concerns, what the impact would be if, if this Super Wawa comes to you know, our neighboring town, how it would interfere, or I'm sorry, not interfere, but it, it could certainly um, it could wreak a little uh, havoc on our local businesses. And I agreed that there certainly could be an impact. So I went to the meeting, it was four hours long, there was a few other items on the agenda. And it was, that meeting was continued. So at this point, there is really not too much to, to say other than in October, there's another meeting to see if any of those variances will be granted. They did go from requesting 11 to five variances. And you know, I don't know how the, that zoning hearing board is gonna rule on any of it. I don't think they do because it's still being discussed. But certainly that's something, if you're interested in, I would recommend going to the Falls Township building sitting there and learning firsthand. Uh, for Labor Day picnic, I'd like to thank all the volunteers, the donors, the organizers, the vendors, of course the residents for coming out and making the 2014 Labor Day picnic success. We've already begun working on next year's picnic at September 7th, smart calendars. Uh, I stated last month I'm having some problems receiving mail that gets addressed to me that's sent to Borough Hall. I didn't receive an invitation from the Rotary Club dedication until the day after the dedication. And I did have a resident actually call me out and was a little critical that I didn't show up, but it's impossible to show up if the invitation comes after the event. So before you jump all over people, you really should kind of get to the bottom of it and I would request something. I'm not sure what the answer is being provided the movies aren't made, but Sure. Uh, I think what you could do for yourself, because other people in the office, but once we do, we just take down the mail and just put it in the office. Right? Well, if you're going to put it in my office, I still need to be in I mean, I do use the office actually quite a bit, but um, you know, there's been times where I've received a phone call, like my telling town invited me to an event. Someone said, hey, there's something here for you that looked more good or not. Just jump in with it. Throwing it in an office is just like sticking it anywhere for a hope I don't know it's here. All right. um, in fact, I was invited by the mayor of Tellytown to attend a program on the use and effects of heroin in Bucks County. It was presented by the uh, Deputy District Attorney Matt Weintraub and it was very well attended, very informative. Recently, very recently, uh, our chief and corporal pitcher attended a two-day intelligence liaison officer training conference uh, sponsored by the uh, Pennsylvania State Police. It's a two-day conference dealing on terrorism and crime sharing, and it was a free event for those two that attended. Chief McClay has prepared a six-month review of the department, and I have copies for everyone tonight I'll hand out. Uh, cameras, uh, I mean, obviously we see cameras here in the meeting room, and we have a question for the manager whoever can answer this. The chief was handed a purchase order for quite a bit of money for the cameras. If the cameras are part of the Johnson Control project, wouldn't that be covered in the aftermath of the department budget? Uh, they were not. Uh, on the police side, they were not. We explained to them today. The chief hasn't been around for like the last two weeks, so we uh, went over on his first available time. And we explained to him today. And he has the uh, information, and he's going to look into it within the next two weeks. Okay. See what he wants to do. Uh, the chief, yeah, the chief. Uh, our, our cameras in the borough are around the building on each outside wall of the building. They're going to be in the vestibules. They're going to be in two in the hallways, one covering the chief's 
uh, window, one covering the borough doors, uh, two at the counter, one covering our safe. And uh, on the outside, they'll be covering our new air conditioners because of the new theft for air conditioners. Copper. Uh, they'll be covering the parking lots on both sides for your cars, for your safety. Yeah. And uh, they are going to be in the vestibules too. So that's the borough side. On the chief side, who's going to have them? Well, he went around and picked out where he wanted to put his cameras. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the ones on the borough side are actually going to cost a little more than uh, uh, what Johnson Controls uh, actually. We told Johnson Controls it was about $8,000. They're going to be a little more than that. We're going to have to actually put a little money towards that. Because we want more cameras. Uh, two things. One, I'd like to comment on a uh, comment that was made by a uh, resident this evening that said that I had to question information on the grant. That's not the case. I actually supplied information on the grant, which is one of the why I was track. And lastly, um, our chief, Chief McClay, has created a harassment policy for the department. Since the council president would not place the motion on tonight's agenda to approve it, after speaking today with the Mayor's Association, I have adopted the policy for the department, and I am asking council tonight to give it to concurrence. I would like to add uh, that the uh, policy has already gone through attorney review. That's the general. How do you have to make this a fight, Dave? It's not a fight. We, we did not get we did not get confirmation from the attorney that was already that's why it wasn't on the agenda. Listen, you said no. I extended a courtesy to council. And I said no until it gets the review by the council, by solicitor review. As soon as it gets solicitor review, we can do it. Well, it's okay. I've adopted the policy. So if we have a policy in place for the department, all I'm asking you is that you guys do concurrence. And so you do, we have a policy in place. Our office is uh, our office is doing everything. It's also been reviewed by Eric Brown before I even mentioned it, and I did share this policy with him. The good news is there was a need to be created it's in place, so whenever the council wants to occur, it's ready. So you want concurrence, or you want a motion to concur? Well, so all I'm asking for at this point is concurrence. Already been adopted by me. I have full charge of the well, department. Well, if you've adopted them, we have no, no uh, reason to motion. Well, that's up to you guys. I'm extending a courtesy once again to say I'm asking you guys for concurrence. So, when it's after it's been reviewed by our solicitor, we put it on the agenda. Who is Eric Brown? He's an attorney that was involved with, the, um, with our uh, investigation. So we're going to be charged twice for attorneys to be looking at the right. No, probably not. We didn't submit it to her ground. So I'm going to be in the program now. Well, can I also just interrupt one more time? What was the money raised for the EMT at the Labor Day picnic? It was uh, 750. Yeah, I think 752. Okay, thank you. The question was how much money was raised for the emergency services? Um, at the end of the day, it was about $750, unless I can be corrected by someone in the Okay. 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 And I think soon if we can get that in and vote it on properly, it's real important. We've done that for a long time. Uh, so I just appreciate him getting the actual policy as well. I don't appreciate him having to do something on his own without letting the council know.
Chris is off. I'd like to please press to be on the agenda for now. So, we'll just list you after the mayor, right? That would be nice, yes. In the future? Uh, thank, you. thank you. Uh, just very quickly, uh, to go over the crime status for this month, our aggravated assaults and robberies are down 71%. Our burglaries are up 6%. Um, where we're getting hit the hardest, for some reason, I don't understand why at this point, we're getting hit hard on bike thefts. I don't, I can't explain it, I wish I could. Um, so anybody in the borough, if you have a bike, please don't leave it outside. Please lock up and shed or your basement. Um, our drug arrests are up from last year. We were 52 last year. We're at 108 drug arrests for this year. And our total mileage for vehicles are, went from 31,000 this time last year up to 15,000. Um, our officers are continuing taking plain clothes training through the block lens. Um, our three corporals in a couple of weeks will be going to New Jersey for uh, management training. And Corporal Smith will be uh, attending a two day Harrisburg trip for evidence, um, handling, and proper um, um, solicitation of where we're going to put our evidence. If you remember back months ago, before I started, that was the main problem downstairs. That is 99% cleared up. And finishing this, this is a CALEA class, which is a authorized organization. The evidence will never be found again. Okay, besides that, um, also, Notice CBS did donate the prescription box and it's downstairs. I ask anybody who has any kind of all prescriptions at home, please deposit them in there. Do not leave them. If you were to prescri um, prescribe any kind of medication, you're not going to use it. Please put it in the box downstairs and put it in the store. All right? Chief, one second before you go. Yes, what are the restrictions on that box? Because I've also been said it's like no, no, um, no, no liquids, no syringes. And also the uh, aerosol. aerosol spray. No aerosols. There's a whole, there's a whole mess. Put it on. And no creams. Yeah. I just want like to knowledge. It's, it's basically pills. Just pills. Okay. That's basically what they want to get. It, it's aimed at the big narcotics, oxycodone, valium, things like that, that tend to make it out onto the highway. We want to take it back and give it back to the DEA uh, industry. So it's down there. We thank CBS for donating that to the department. And please use it. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, Ann. And just to add to that, that um, program that we went to in Doyle's, I'm sorry, other town, that's what the district attorney was saying. That's where your heroin use unfortunately okay. starts. They say that's actually the gateway drug, or it's the prescription drugs, the third parties, and then we, uh, they have to feed the need and it progresses up to some mm -hmm. very cheap and dangerous, which is the other guy. Buildings, general fund, one hundred ten thousand six hundred sixty-seven dollars and eighty-two cents. Street lighting fund, seven thousand two hundred seventy-four dollars and thirty-two cents. Library fund, four thousand four hundred and forty-six dollars and two cents. Recreation fund, two thousand four hundred fourteen dollars and ninety-three cents. Sinking fund, three thousand two hundred eighteen dollars and forty cents. Street fund, five thousand two hundred seventy-seven dollars and seventy cents. State highway fund, two thousand five hundred sixty-seven dollars and ninety cents. Uh, Jones, six hundred nine dollars and eighty-nine cents. A grand total of one hundred thirty-six thousand four hundred seventy-seven dollars and ninety-eight cents. We have a motion to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments on the bill list? Mr. Sister. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Cronin. Yes. Mr. Parker. Yes. Mr. Sanford. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Kerner. Yes. Ms. Sherman. Yes. Motion carries eight zero. Next is eight B. It's a motion to acknowledge receipt of the minimum municipal obligation forms, which is MMO, for the vote for both the police uniform, I'm sorry, uniform and the non-uniform pension plans 
to be submitted to the Pennsylvania Municipal, Municipal Retirement System by October 10, 2014. Uh, let's see, we got them on packets tonight. They're just going out ready. So, I have, I'm going to split them up if I may. So, the motion, the first motion will be for the, uh, the non no, the non uniform pension plan. Um, there, the, our minimum obligation is zero. So I guess we just have to put it on the record, even if it's zero, I think we should put it on the record. So um, is that true? I mean, maybe we don't put it zero. We have zero We're not spending money. We're not spending any money anymore, but uh, the public should know. Uh, so uh, I think the motion would be um, we got the MMO for the non-uniform pension plan for the year 2000. Uh, it's just for the plan year 2015 will be zero um, zero dollars at, the, at this time at this time this is not this this is all changed but this means that Nancy that there is no unfunded liability correct it's, it's full we don't have to we don't have to put any money in for this one yeah. at this time. so at this time. so may I have a motion for this first one please this is for the non uniform so moved a second? I'll second that. Okay. Questions or comments on this particular one? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8 0. Next, it's a motion to acknowledge the receipt of the, the minimum, minimum municipal obligation MMO for the police uniform pension plan in the amount of. $192,569. I'm not sure what that was. What was that thing? $192,569. Seems like a packet. $192,600. $592,000. We should get some state funds for that. I think last year we got about $60,000. Yeah. That's all we got. I don't know how it's based, whether it's based on the amount that we owe or whether it's based on how much money the state has. So we'll find out. And is this still under 8B? Are you splitting this? It's yep. But it's still under 8B, both of them? Yep. Yeah. So you're doing it? Yes. On, on this 
Yeah. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Carswell. Yes. Mr. Parker. Yes. Mr. Sanford. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Kerner. Yes. Mr. Sherman. Yes. Motion carries in zero. As soon as we, if the figure changes at all, of course, uh, council will be notified um, if we find out any differently. Have a motion to approve the payment in the amount of $39,655 to the Marshall Fire Company as per the 2014 Fire Fund budget. So moved. Anybody second? I'm sorry, second? Second. Is that Debbie? Yes, second. Okay. Questions or comments on this motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries 8 0. Next, 8D, a motion to approve payment in the amount of $45,500 the Mars Ambulance Squad as per the 2014 EMS fund budget. Any motion? That was, uh, right, right. I'll second motion. Any questions or comments on this motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8 0. Next on the new business, 10A, motion to ratify the hiring of Dave J. Trula, the Special Counsel for Police Negotiations and Arbitration. So moved. Second. Questions or comments on the motion? Uh, yeah. Just finding this out over the weekend. How did, um, who, who decided to solicit for true love to do it? Who decided that? Thing? Actually, uh, we had David True Love do our arbitration three years ago. Yeah, I remember that. And, uh, as we were negotiating with the police, we knew if we had to go to arbitration, we decided that if we had to go to arbitration, we would hire Dave to go. He had all our records. He had all the information about the police. He had all the information about uh, the people in Morrisville, the statistics of Morrisville, the statistics of our, their age, the payrolls, what they made, and he presented a good case to the arbitrator in the last time. It was recommended last time by Sean McKenzie that we hire David to love an outside council. So they actually notified us not this last Friday, but the Friday before they sent us a letter. I think we got it Monday, the 5th. And we only had five days to respond from the date of that letter, which only gave us to this, this last Friday to respond with the name of an arbitrator who was going to represent us. Right. So we can And what the issues would be, because if you did address them, uh, yeah. they could not be addressed in arbitration. So we called Dave True Love, he quickly responded and said he was represent us to the arbitrator. And also, they gave us a list of demands, and if we didn't respond with our list of demands, we would only be negotiating their list of demands. So we had to do everything very quickly, and that's why we had to do it all within last week by Friday. So we had to respond to their lawyer and, and give everybody all the information within one week. And we don't know if we really, we expect to meet again, too. So yeah. the, the paperwork is, uh, was necessary to have anybody at certain dates, but um, you know, I've been approached by um, one of the officers that they still want to meet and we're willing to meet. So it doesn't so it doesn't mean that we're there we're going to arbitration but the paperwork is in in case that happens. If you haven't had to go back. But that was a formality. We had to respond to that uh, letter. It was after one eleven arbitration so was our current solicitor uh, advised that we might be outside council which he consulted to see whether or not his firm was able to handle it Do we know how much per the hourly rate is for this group of people who's not listening? Will it be matched or less? Yeah, that's nice. Well, we will. We have to write a letter. We're going to have to ask if we're going to have to be hired, Mr. Trudeau. We couldn't hire him until he would approve it tonight. We'll be just getting the right to the board meeting until I put it in. The right to the board meeting. We're going to have to approve it tonight. We have to get something after. Okay. 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 Ok
So I also noticed that the motion reads for ratified, which means that action has already been taken. Was council told or notified that you needed to hire a special counsel? The ratification is only because the just because uh, Dave Trulo attended uh, came up here on Thursday to discuss some of the, the needs that we had with him in the Friday. I'm sure you'll disagree with this, but I think it shows lack of transparency. You have all these emergencies, and you, you don't even tell anyone that they have to back. We can't hear you. Did you speak in the mic? Yeah. I said I'm sure some will disagree, but to me it shows a lack of transparency. If you have a, an emergency, which you're saying was a deadline, you took action, but you didn't inform anybody. You didn't call anyone, you didn't tell anyone, and now you're saying ratify. Oh, council, we either have to have all meetings. That's why we have the police committee. That's who this, the police committee was the one that went. Yeah, but the police committee didn't hire him. Like, no one no, we're going to hire him now, maybe. That's, that's right. So it's that call the question, Nancy. Yeah. Yeah.
that is it for business this evening. And we have um, announcements. Uh, the only announcement I would like to make is um, I'd like to thank those who attended the Jazz Festival this past Saturday. Uh, yes, it was drizzling, but um, it, it, it didn't matter. It stopped about 6 o'clock. Um, so it was a very small crowd, probably around 35, maybe 40. But, um, but nonetheless, the, the group is there. And, uh, and two students from the high school came and played with the band. Anyone else? No. Uh, I just, uh, at last meeting, um, I lost my cold uh, and I tossed the tablet across the dance and uh, it actually sounded a lot worse than it was when I landed, but um, it was a mistake. I lost my cold. Um, 